and it's solved. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, hello everyone. This is uh, wrapping things with Combine and I'm not nervous at all in this moment. Uh, my name is Stefano Mombino and I uh, work for Synesthesia as a head of mobile platform, meaning that I uh, develop mainly on iOS uh, uh, as a tech leader and also uh, mm, I'm a supervisor for the all Android and iOS uh, platforms. We are the company organizing this event and uh, uh, also the, the DroidCon Italy, which is a very big event about DroidCon, and uh, we usually do get around dressed like minions, like you can see in, uh, in these pictures, and uh, we are the yellow ones, and uh, we're still growing in number. We are a, a lot, a very big company, and it's, uh, so, um, it's a pleasure to work for them. I'm also a member of this uh, Italian uh, Facebook group, uh, which it's called Italy Swift User Group. Uh, and I encourage everyone from you, of you from Italy to subscribe uh, because it's a great place to share knowledge uh, about all the, the Swift uh, problems we uh, encounter each day in our development process. So today <clears throat> it's about Combine. Combine, it's, it's a new framework mm, just presented uh, at latest WWDC from Apple. And it's a, uh, an important framework to implement reactive programming on natively on the Apple platform. Uh, as of today, like Swift UI, it's only available uh, um, on iOS 13, WatchOS 6, and so on. So it's unlikely that you will be able to use it uh, uh, today or tomorrow in a real production environment unless you're targeting those platforms. But uh, I believe it's uh, really, really important to start uh, uh, working with it and try to get around the, um, the reactive thinking uh, because it will eventually become some very standard way of, um, of, of working on iOS. And it's like we saw before, it's already integrated with uh, Swift UI uh, in, in many levels. So what is uh, actually a reactive uh, framework? Uh, it's all about uh, handling streams of values over time. It's like having collection like uh, arrays uh, uh, or dictionaries, um, not having uh, right at the very first moment uh, all the values uh, available, but somehow they will become available through time. So you have some kind of objects that you can observe uh, and wait for them to um, emit values of some kind of, uh, of type and uh, eventually uh, get back those values and consume them on the other end of the chain of the reactive stream. So let's, uh, let's take uh, an example about this. Let's imagine we have some kind of object producing URL over time, and uh, you want uh, from another part of your application to watch for those URL, convert them, and uh, um, display some kind of uh, images, uh, some uh, memes, for instance. Okay, um, combine works like this. You have some kind of object, uh, you provide it some kind of URLs uh, streamed over time, and after, and, and you pass it to a method uh, that converts asynchronously into memes, for instance, and after a while, you can get some, your first meme. Um, in some other part of the application, uh, a second URL is emitted into the same object, uh, converted it into meme, and eventually, over time, you get the second meme, and so on. So combined, it's everything about uh, uh, um, wrapping those things all around and give you a nice uh, and um, concise uh, um, framework and APIs to work with them without having to deal with internal uh, asynchronous API provided by each kind of framework you want to use. Reactive programming on, uh, on iOS has a long history right now. Uh, I began working with um, Reactive Coco back in uh, 2013, I think, uh, and I've been developing uh, at least um, more than 100 apps uh, uh, since then, all react in the reactive way. So first we started with Reactive Coco in uh, Objective-C back then, now it's called Reactive Objective-C because uh, um, it's an open source platform and when Swift came out, they decided to change the name and uh, have it become Reactive Swift. <clears throat> and then uh, on, on a different organization, always open source, called ReactiveX, started to develop uh, uh, reactive concepts around observables uh, and subscriptions uh, um, for all the, many of uh, the platforms available for developing, like JavaScript, Java, Kotlin, and eventually RxSwift. 
this is the main uh, uh, reactive framework I'm using uh, every day. Um, we heard from Shai this morning, he's the main maintainer uh, of, this, uh, of this framework and it's, they did a very good, great job. Uh, and then Apple uh, came out uh, last, uh, last summer with Combine, uh, providing kind of the same things and the same concept uh, that uh, Reactive Swift and Reactive uh, and Narek Swift were already providing, but uh, implementing them natively and closed sourcing them. So let's start talking about the three main pieces of architecture uh, of a reactive framework. You need three things to connect themselves uh, uh, between. And the first thing is the publisher. The publisher is an, an object in, uh, in combined, it's a protocol actually, uh, that it's capable um, of encapsulating some kind of asynchronous logic that I used to call uh, um, work over time. You start at some point of time, you work and produce output, and some later on the output is available. And this express, uh, this is not actual syntax because publisher, it's a protocol, but it's something that needs to conform to publisher and by expressing a value type and an error type. Um, what does it mean? At some point in time, uh, when it's activated, this publisher can emit zero, one or more value over time. And you get a nice uh, uh, and clean API to watch for this value and consume them. Um, another thing that can happen during a stream is that something uh, goes wrong one time and the stream is immediately uh, interrupted, uh, outputting uh, an error. And that's why the publisher has two value types, one for the values and one for the error. And uh, the most uh, common uh, asynchronous thing you can do, it's a network call. So when you want to, I don't know, call an API or download an image from the web, uh, you simply uh, start the call, you expect for some value, one in this case, to be emitted at some point of time, or if something bad happened, uh, you get an error and you have to deal with that. And by the way, when something bad goes wrong on servers, this is my favorite error I can, uh, I can think about. It's, uh, it's super fun. Anyway, uh, Combine provides you um, a lot of uh, um, extension on, on native objects, uh, like on timer, on uh, URL session data tasks, uh, notification center, and KVO, meaning that uh, you, if you import Combine in your files, uh, you automatically get uh, new function generating publishers that uh, you can use later on. It's uh, one of the most important, I think, is the KVO, for instance, where you can watch uh, uh, variables, KVO variables over time, over a view, for instance, and you can watch the changes in a frame simply with the syntax. It's very, very powerful. The next thing I want, I want to talk to you about is uh, the subscriber, which is the other end of, the, of a reactive chain. I mean, I have uh, the publisher capable of emitting values over time, but I need some object capable of consuming them, capable of receiving and use those values. Otherwise, there, wasn't, there would be no point at all of having a, a reactive framework. Um, so we have the subscriber protocol um, that has to be tied with the generic value and the generic error type to the publisher's one. Uh, it's like uh, I'm talking to you right now and I'm a publisher of information in this moment and I'm speaking in English and you're a subscriber for the English language and all of a sudden I would start to talk in Italian. You wouldn't be able to connect with me, you, most of you at, uh, at least. Um, usually you don't implement actual uh, subscriber but uh, you use closures provided by Swift or key paths assignment. What does it mean? You get uh, for, uh, from the combined frameworks these, uh, these two methods. Uh, it is the sync, which is uh, uh, something you attach to, a, to a, a publisher, and the closure you provide it, it's the place where you get all the strings of value over time. And another very powerful uh, operator, sorry, a subscriber, uh, that you get from, uh, from Combine is the assign method. You can use key paths on uh, uh, values, like image view in this case, and assign um, every, every time from the streams a, a new item is, uh, is published, you can assign it to the image property in this case. And the third part of a reactive framework, very important, is the subscription subscription, which is the um, connection between a subscriber and uh, a publisher. 
um, the thing is that the subscription usually is the, um, the action that trigger the publisher and tells him, hey, okay, it's okay to start your work, start downloading the image from the internet, start whatever you have to do. Um, it can be explicitly canceled in, um, at any time, and you can tell the publisher, hey, stop downloading, you're taking too much, I don't want to waste my bandwidth uh, over connection. It's something in this room, it can be very important since we have no connection or no, no powerful connection, for instance. Um, a subscription object uh, uh, has to conform to the cancellable protocol, and the cancellable protocol is an object that it's uh, uh, usually automatically cancelled cancelled on the, the initialization function, function. So if you get an array of any cancellable object, when the array is disposed, you automatically interrupt and uh, cancel every subscription on the publishers you are subscribed to. Let's take this with an example. Imagine, um, I don't know, Apple Arcade. It's a service. It's a publisher of games, if you think in, in a certain way. And you are the subscriber to the Apple Arcade uh, service because you want to receive games on your phone. So once you decide to start and pay Apple Arcade uh, $5 a month, you actually create a subscription, and from that moment on, you start receiving games if you download them. Uh, at any point in time, you can cancel and stop paying and receiving games. So it's quite a, a nice uh, parallel with um, some real-life example. So these are the three main uh, uh, features provided by a reactive uh, framework. But, uh, they would be kind of pointless if uh, it wasn't for operators, which are um, methods, uh, uh, function that you put in between the stream to manipulate, to transform it, and to um, create very complex uh, uh, flows of data through time and simply observing on the very uh, end of the, of the chain. Uh, it's the same thing we are doing on arrays when you use map, filter, or reduce. We are taking the array for each element. We are transforming it with map into something else. Uh, we filter it out uh, with the, the filter function and uh, um, applying to each uh, element the closure we are providing it, and so on. Um, let's, let's take a, an example uh, again. Imagine you have a publisher emitting everything you are typing into a keyboard, into a text value. That would be an any publisher with string as output, output value and never as an error, because you will never error out by typing on a keyboard. Uh, and imagine you want to connect uh, these, uh, these values, the strings you're inputting into your, your text value, uh, and send it to a server for a query on a, on a database. And the server doesn't want you to um, send white spaces or uh, uh, two short uh, words. This is how you would do, um, and you could get around this task with combine. So you take the string publisher, you use the map operator, and you trim out each elements you get down the string by uh, eliminating the white spaces. You filter out everything uh, under six characters, so count um, greater than five. And then, check it out, you can use the flat map operator and take each one of these values, is the string values, and pass it to a, some kind of a, your internal network API that actually returns a new publisher created from the, the text input you are giving it to it. And this publisher inside, you don't know how it's done, you don't know if it's using Alamo Fire, uh, Data Task, Moya under the hood, you don't want to know. You don't even want to know it's calling an API, it could be a, uh, I don't know, a, a database search internal. But you know that this will add the, the return value to the stream. So when you actually reference this, uh, this big chain from the outside, you simply get a stream of final mapped value from the API publisher. And it's super powerful. We'll see that in a minute uh, um, in a later example. Other things you can do with operators that are really cool and uh, super convenient to use, it's, uh, for instance, to switch from one thread to another and get rid of the dispatch sync, uh, this dispatch queue async uh, methods you are already used to use. Uh, it's, it's just a simple operator that can switch from a thread to another. You can throttle values over time. If you are typing too fast on the keyboard, you don't want to send all of those values to the server, but you want, uh, I think, uh, just the last one after you stop typing. 
And this is just one single operator, one single li line of code that you put in the middle of the stream. And you can also combine many publishers into a single one with rules uh, defining which elements from each publisher uh, has to be used in the, the, at the bottom of the stream um, and really um, solve very complex problems just mixing up publishers. You also get some, it's not actually an operator, but it's a type of value, uh, it's a type of publisher, it's the just, which is useful when you have to do some, uh, I don't know, some if else inside a flat map. And in one case, you want to generate a new stream of uh, asynchronous work. And in the other case, you simply want to emit uh, an immediate value. So just emits immediately um, the, the value provided and then completes. I'll show this again in a, in a minute. So let's take a real life example. We have a URL session data task, okay? Uh, usually what we have to do, we have to create a task from URL session shared or whatsoever um, data task, provide it a URL or a URL request, and uh, immediately provide the closure where we define what we want to do with the data given back from the APIs. So we have to take this task variable returned by this initializer and store it somewhere in our code. When we are ready to start it, we have to call manually the resume method to start the actual download. And when we want to dispose and cancel before it's completed this kind of operation, we have to manually cancel it. And we get only a single callback per task, we cannot spread the same uh, uh, work, the same output in different part of the code because we need to provide somehow the same callback in the very first initialization. Um, regarding this resume method, this was very funny from uh, Ellen Shapiro some years ago. Uh, it has been zero days since I forgot to call it resume because we always forgot to call resume on data task. It's uh, a very common mistake. And let's, think, let's, say, let's see how Combine can actually um, get around these problems. This is something we get for free just importing Combine, Apple's Combine, inside our uh, code. There's no dependency, no external dependencies, as long as we're targeting iOS 13. And we'll start by creating some kind of instance of a URL session. I'm using the shared one. And we get this data task publisher that, check it out, only takes the URL and not a closure we are getting back a publisher over this. And it's going to be a publisher emitting a value, and the value is a tuple made of data and URL response we are going to eventually get from the API. And also the, NS, uh, the, sorry, the URL error type we are getting on the error stream of the publisher. Then what we want to do, we want to take the data and use it somehow. So we get rid of the um, URL response we're getting from the tuple and just taking the data. Each time uh, the data task is emitting some kind of value. And then we want to say, if you, if you are a, a bad gateway, like uh, we saw before, I don't want to see your error. I just want an empty data. So I'm taking the stream every time it errors out, I want to replace the error with an actual value that I'm providing myself, and it's going to be an empty data. And then I'm ready. This is a variable. I can store it, and it hasn't done anything so far. Then I can use it later on and subscribe to it by using, for instance, the sync method that it's uh, asking me for a closure actually using the data. So this is the, the point where you're actually using your values and creating something. You are, I don't know, logging it, uh, transforming it into a, a mapped object, an image, uh, I don't know. Uh, the, the important thing is that the sync, the, the moment you call the sync function, the work actually starts. The URL is called and you get uh, an error eventually in time or a data. And after that, you get a reference to the subscription, like we saw before, and you have to store it somehow, otherwise it will be canceled. In, in, this, in this way, by the way, you can cancel it later. So you get a reference inside a cancelables uh, uh, array, and once the array is disposed, you get automatically disposal of all the works going on. Okay, um, this actually has a very big problem, and uh, it's leading to uh, type erasure, because each time you're going to use um, an operator like map, filter, flat map, and, and so on, you are actually creating a new type of publisher 
that is going to encapsulate the previous value into a new type. And then you use the next uh, uh, operator, and the values keeps, uh, the, the data type of the returning publisher keeps growing on. I honestly don't know why Apple had to design this in this way, because when you use RxWift with observables, you don't have to deal uh, with this kind of uh, problems. But it's very, very, very easy to get around this problem by just simply calling the erase to any publisher function at the end of the chain. Uh, I'm going to show you in this example. So let's, let's take the, the previous example. Uh, we have an, out, an output data type, uh, like I said, uh, with data and response and uh, URL, URL error. Sorry, it's so difficult to say. I'm Italian, sorry. Uh, as error type uh, on the, down the stream. And this is our main output. It is, this is the, the, um, the starting output we are getting from uh, the, the data task publisher. When we actually calling data task publisher on a URL session, we get this type, URL session dot data task publisher. And then we call map over it. And we get, check it out, a, a new class or struct uh, called map with a generic type of URL session data task publisher and converting it into data. And when we use the replace error, like in the previous example, you see that the list keeps growing on. If you were to return this value from a function, it would be almost impossible to remember what you have to return. That's why there is the erase to any publisher method that uh, you can use to get uh, this very simple uh, object back. So you have to just deal with any publisher. You don't want to know how it's made inside, what kind of uh, tricks were used to transform a data into an image, uh, to see every map, replace error, and whatsoever. You just want a stream of values over time, and the value has to be data, and the error has to be never. So it's, uh, um, you, when you start using combine, you will see a lot of arrays to any publisher almost every, everywhere. So why is uh, this talk called Wrapping Things with Combine? Well, once you get around this, the, the, the publisher object and learn how to stuff things around it and wrap it uh, as a stream, you can mix all together um, whatever streams it comes to your mind and try to um, export a single stream without dealing with the details inside. You can chain operation from different domains. Uh, we can think about, I don't know, I want to take the, um, the location manager from, uh, from the to take the position uh, of, the, of the current user, and each time I change my position, but only if I move the, I don't know, one kilometer, I want to send my position to the server, and the server is going to uh, give me back some kind of value. When I get that value, I want to pass it to some other asynchronous task, and so on. You can chain them with a very clever APIs and uh, stop dealing with the details that each framework has to um, be, be compliant with. So it's really, really powerful. Um, and this is actually uh, how to, you can abstract complex operation into a single object. And like I said before, uh, you can, always try to create your own, very own publisher by simply, simply, it's a, a very great word, I mean, by <laughs> wrapping around the, the required uh, methods uh, uh, by the publisher object, the publisher pro protocol, and uh, try to uh, experiment with it. I mean, it's more, to wrap your very kind of stream, it's uh, easier on RxWift as of today, but I'm very confident they will try to find some uh, uh, way around it and make it available for uh, um, most, the most people. So, in, at, at the very beginning I was trying to, um, to, to prepare a, a live demo for you, but I decided not, and I'm glad I didn't because uh, it would have required some kind of network connectivity. But I, I love the meme, I love the, the little girl uh, with the exploding house, so I decided to, to leave this slide. So, Let's, let's think about a, a real life example. I, I don't know how much real I, I, it is, but uh, it's something we actually implemented in production in many, in many frameworks. Imagine, for instance, to have a feed-driven uh, um, APIs like uh, Spotify is doing, and uh, you get uh, strings representing images, and you don't know if the images are going to be remote and 
will have to be downloaded, or uh, you, you have to look for them in the assets catalog of your application. So we want to um, define a, a concept of a synchronous image uh, and try to conform different data types to that protocol and use combine around it and eventually try to iterate it, uh, iterate over this array over time. So let's see. Let's start by defining our main protocol. It, I call it with um, a lot of fantasy, with image. And it's going to expose, force you to implement an image publisher returning back an end publisher stream with UI image optional as an output value. And uh, we don't want that uh, kind of stream to never error out. So the first thing is to try to find a way to actually download from the, from the net uh, the, um, the images. So what is the main uh, object uh, for downloading images? It's the, uh, the, the single starting point, it's the URL. So if we conform uh, the URL to with image, uh, we can declare the image publisher over it. And then, like I showed before, uh, we can create a data task publisher starting from self. Then each time, uh, it will be once, but it's, it's not uh, important in, in this moment. Each time uh, you get a data from the, from the publisher itself, you can transform it through map into an image if it's possible. Otherwise, you get nil from the image data initializer. <clears throat> and if anything goes wrong, we don't want the, the bad gateway error like before, but we want simply a nil image because uh, uh, Actually, we don't, uh, we don't want to display uh, an error. It would be very hard to display an error inside an image. There's no point of it. This is a, a very uh, important other thing. If uh, we are dealing with asynchronous uh, uh, and downloading from the net, we don't want to use the images on image views on the main loop. That's why I'm wrapping the stream and telling it, OK, whatever stream you're coming from, just drop the, the thread you were on and switch over the main loop, the main thread. And then this is a guarantee that every kind of, ver of value over time will be received on the main thread. <clears throat> and my great friend, uh, my, my great friend, uh, raised to any publisher at the very end so that the output value is actually any publisher and I don't have to deal with all the operation and transformation I had in the middle. So next step. Uh, I could also get strings over time and not just URLs, and I want to conform the string to this with image protocol. <clears throat> so I have to declare and uh, enforce the, um, the function. And then I want to say, if my string is an actual URL, I don't want uh, to use a different kind of output. I simply want to convert it to a URL, check if my scheme is uh, uh, HTTPS, because uh, from my experience, almost anything is convertible to uh, URL, even if uh, it doesn't have a, a scheme in front of it. So I want to just deal with HTTPS uh, images. And if it's the case, then I want to use the image publisher over URL. Otherwise, I just want to check over the image assets uh, of my uh, application and simply return that value. And that's why I'm using just. It's a stream like the, the data task publisher we saw before. But the moment I subscribe to it, I immediately get the UI image name itself out. And then the, um, the stream is automatically completed. And I'm not forgetting about my friend, uh, as to any publisher, because otherwise this thing wouldn't compile at all. So let's see a sample usage, uh, because it's, uh, I mean, we, we haven't seen anything yet. So, I have some local image. This is the name in my assets uh, catalog. And I want an image publisher over that. So I don't know what's going uh, inside the image publisher, but I know that I will get a stream. And I simply have to assign that stream to the image key path on my image view. And that's it. It's, it's so simple. I have wrapped the concept of uh, remote uh, uh, of transforming a string into uh, an image in four lines of code, and I can reuse it uh, not only across um, the same project, but only across uh, each kind of project. It's very, very powerful. Uh, and uh, the important thing is that the moment I um, 
change the, the string into an actual URL, uh, there's no change at all. I will have some kind of delay because I will have to download the image from the, from the net, uh, but at, at the end I will, also, I will always get the image. And uh, things can also get fancy, and uh, I, I don't want to explain actually everything here, but I simply tried to conform the UI color class to the with image protocol. And what I'm doing here is to create an image context and creating a circle of 300 by 300 uh, dimension, creating it uh, on uh, um, a, background, a background thread because it's a circle now, but it could get complex and uh, I, I could uh, end up uh, freezing my UI, I don't know. So I'm subscribing to the, to the operation on the utility queue and uh, switching back when the value is ready from the main loop. And this is really powerful. I mean, it's pointless to have an image publisher uh, emitting uh, circles. I, I, this is not a real uh, life example, but it's really, really powerful to be able to do that. Um, next thing I want to show you and to mix up things is the timer. So timer gets an extension from, um, from Combine uh, that it's capable of taking like a metronome uh, each uh, seconds you, you, I don't know, it's five seconds for instance, and you get the actual date uh, in a stream. So I created a new function called loop because I want to be able to loop over my array of uh, with image uh, um, items and uh, start for the first, then the second, and when I get to the bottom, start back. This I want to um, be done in time. Check it out. So if I provide a total count of items uh, um, not, uh, not greater than one, I don't want anything to be uh, looped because I cannot loop over zero element or less. And this is why I'm using the empty. Like the just, it's a simple uh, stream that immediately completes. It's, uh, I know it sounds pointless, but it's really useful because I, I handled a case and still have a, um, a publisher out that will do kind of anything. <clears throat> Otherwise, I want to return timer and use the publish every five seconds on main thread. I will skip the auto connect part because it's the documentation uh, telling you why you should use this and I want to get uh, down with stuff like this because it's uh, really complex. Um, but it's, uh, oh sorry, uh, happened to me as well at the very end. Ah, uh, come on. Okay, um, this is um, a publisher actually uh, triggering uh, an output with the actual date value uh, over time every five seconds. If I use autoconnect and subscribe to it, after five seconds, I will get the first uh, date value, and after 10 seconds, the second, and so on. But I don't want the date value. I want a counter that I will be eventually able and capable to use over my array. So what I have to do, I have to take the previous value, transform it with map, if I can, into some kind of integer, take the previous value, add one, and if I'm out of bounds, get back to zero. And that's why I'm using the scan operator. It's like reduce on, uh, on array, but with the emission of the value every time uh, a new value is uh, calculated. So check it out. I get two values in the closure, the accumulator, which will have the same type as that little zero I put over there, and the actual value emitted from the previous publisher. So I get the date from the publish publisher and my starting value of zero. And then what I, what, I have, what I want to say is to take the previous value of the accumulator, add one, and module it over total. So if I get over, I don't know, I'm moduling over five elements. If I get six, I get back to the start. So from this moment on, the chain is not anymore made of date value, but it's made of uh, integer value, and that's the, the actual um, type I'm trying to emit. If you look at the second line, I get the any publisher int never. The problem is that if I want to start immediately this kind of logic, I will have to force a zero at the very end of the stream, and this is the prepend uh, operator, because otherwise I would have to wait for the first uh, element uh, emitted by the timer. And then I, uh, I call my friend, I know, I'm already acquainted with that. Okay, why, this, uh, why I made up all of this? Let's wrap it up. I want to create an array with 
some local image, some UI color, some uh, string representing URL. And this is a, a valid syntax, I mean, because all the three um, values I, I, I used in the array conforms to the with image protocol. And then I want to loop over them, but I don't know if, we, uh, if the, they will be available at the very moment or I will have to download from the net. So I can use my previous function returning a publisher and I want to loop over the array count each five seconds. Then each time I get an integer out of the stream, I can convert, I can take the, um, the corresponding position in the array. Uh, the first one would be zero and I already taken care of uh, out of bounds uh, inside the loop. It's not the safest way, but it's just an example. And use the image publisher function so flat map is actually telling me, okay, take this value in this moment, don't uh, uh, emit it right now down the stream, but create another stream, stream and subscribe it. So I get uh, from, the, from the image view point of view where I'm assigning the images down the stream, a stream of, Im of images com fully compatible uh, with the image uh, keep up. And once uh, I store it into cancelables, I'm done, and I, in four lines of code, I have a looper. And I wanted to, to show you, but uh, we, don't care, we don't get connectivity, so that my simulator wouldn't, wouldn't work, but just Im imagine uh, uh, some images uh, looping over time. And that's it. Thank you.